OK, well, maybe I'll just say a few words about myself. I'm Lorna Gibson. I'm in the materials department. Uh, I teach two courses. One's on mechanical behavior of materials, 3032. That's what I'm going to talk about today. And I teach a second course on cellular solids, which is more of an upper-level upper elective uh, course. Um, so the 3032 is on mechanical behavior of materials. And it's, in part, it's uh, um, looking at mechanics, looking at if you apply forces externally, how do they get transferred internally? And it also looks at uh, why do materials have the properties they do? So what controls their mechanical properties from a sort of atomistic level? So that's what the course basically covers. And in 2013, we started preparing it as an MITx course to offer it online. So we videotaped the lectures. We, you know, I read the lecture notes. We made up online problem sets. Um, and then uh, we started offering it online, and we've done it every fall since then. Um, and then I, you know, I was continuing to teach the course at MIT. And over the last few years, the course has evolved. And what I really wanted to talk about today was how the course has evolved. I can see my computer is not cooperating. <laughs> No. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to just keep keep talking then. So, so what we've done at MIT is in 2013, that fall, we we put the um, the online course together, and then in 2014, I taught the course in the traditional format. So the traditional format is I was lecturing three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for an hour. Um, the TA did a recitation, and we had written problem sets that we handed out one week, and the students handed in the following week, and we graded and then handed back the week after that. So in 2014, we just used that same format, but the students at MIT had access to all the online stuff that the MIT X kids had. So if they had to miss a lecture for, a re for some reason, uh, they could look at the video of the lecture. Um, they were still handing in the same problem sets, uh, these written problem sets. Um, and, but I was doing the same lectures. And, and a lot of the students kind of said to me, wow, your, your live lectures are virtually identical to the video lectures. And I, I had put a lot of work <laughs> into making those videos. I had you know, gone over the whole lectures again. I had redone the notes. And I had made it the way I want it. So when I was lecturing, yeah, OK, thanks. So the, when I was lecturing um, the live lectures, it pretty much was the same as the videos. Um, and there were about, hmm, Let's see, there's about 30, 35 students take this class most years. And I'd say of the top five students in the class, I think three of them never came to class. They, they were just watching the lecture videos. And they were doing great just doing that. Uh, so let me, let me catch up with this since, since we've now got this. So this is about what the course is. This is saying putting it online. Yeah, so this is where I am now. So, so of the top five students, uh, three of them didn't come to the lectures. And they seem to be doing just, just great. So then the following year, in 2015, I flipped the class. And this is the schedule that we arranged. So you know how MITx has week one, week two. It goes week by week. So each week was released on a Wednesday. And then the following Monday, I did a recitation. I also did a recitation on the Tuesday. And then the problem set, the online problem set, was due that Tuesday, you know, close to midnight. And then the following day, the next week, was released. And then the following Thursday, we had a, the TA did a review of the previous week. And then on that Friday, we had a little 15-minute quizlet, which was based on the problem set. It, it was one of the problems from the problem set. So if you did the problem set and you looked at the lectures and you knew how to do the problem set, you, you could get the quizlet question right. So this, this went fairly well. And we did a little student survey. And the students preferred this format. You know, We did the 1 to 7 scale. So one was they loved it, to, or 7 was they loved it, 1 was they hated it. Uh, so they, they preferred it. They liked the instantaneous feedback that they got, you know, the green check mark with the uh, online problem sets. You know, I was worried that they didn't think they had enough time with me, and mostly they thought they did have enough time with me. And most of them thought that they learned the material better. Uh, we also got some comments. Uh, they said things like being exposed to the concepts more times helped me cement them in my mind. They loved the instantaneous feedback on the problem sets. Uh, they thought it was great for covering key concepts in depth. A number of people complained that the online problem sets were too easy. And I guess I found with the online problem sets, if you give them something hard, we only grade the final numerical answer. So if you give them some big, long, complicated thing, you know, they may not get that numerical answer, but they may understand a lot of it. And it seems kind of unfair. And the other option is you can kind of lead them through it step by step, but then it kind of defeats the whole purpose of having a hard problem, because you kind of told them how to do it. So the online problems were a little too easy. 
Um, some of the criticisms were, uh, one person said they didn't learn the derivations in as much detail as if they'd sat through them in lecture. I think that's because they just didn't spend as much time on the videos. They didn't, you know, they weren't sort of looking at it as carefully. And, and the people who don't like it, they, they don't like the flipped classroom. They really prefer having the live lecture so they can ask me questions and get the instantaneous feedback. From my point of view, I, I like the flipped class. I felt the advantages were the problem sets are in sync with the lecture material. You know, they look at a set of videos, they do the problem set, they, they get the answers, they do the little quizlet all in nine days. So everything's in sync. I like the instantaneous feedback on the problem set questions. And then this little weekly quizlet gave them some incentive to review the material after they've done the problem set. The disadvantages I felt were the students seemed kind of focused on the problem set and less on the lectures. And uh, they did well on the numerical problems, but seemed a little weaker on the concepts. Um, so this past fall, the term that we've just had, what I did was I modified the flipped class a little. Uh, we still had the online problems, but I added a written problem set. And the written problem set had two questions each week, and it was more challenging. And I arranged with the TA that it would be um, graded overnight. So the students would hand it in one night, it would get graded, and they would get it back the next day. And it would be before they had the little weekly mini quiz, the Quizlet. And instead of a one hour recitation, I did an hour and a half, because I found the hour wasn't quite enough. So this was the schedule we had this past term. So again, the weekend would get released on a Wednesday. I would do an hour and a half recitation on a, on a Monday. Uh, the, pro the online problem set was due on Tuesday. The written one was due on the Wednesday. And then they would get that back the Thursday and have the, the little Quizlet thing on the Friday. So these were comments that I got at the end of this term, and I liked the first one the best. Made me happy and confident, which is not something you hear from MIT students a lot. Happy and confident. So I like that. Uh, and I think they really liked the combination of the written and the online problem sets. A number of them said they would try the online problems first because they were easier, and it kind of gave them some confidence, like, oh, I get this, I can do this. And then they would try the, hard, the written ones. And I made the written ones hard enough that typically they couldn't get it without coming to class and getting some hints on how to do it. Uh, here's another comment. Really like the com combination of simple online questions and more interesting written questions. I love the Quizlets. Um, I had far more resources in this class format than I do in a traditional class. And again, some people thought it was still too easy. Uh, one person said, can all my classes be flipped, please? And another person said, I didn't like the flipped classroom style. I wish the lectures could have been in person. And I think there's always going to be a handful of students who prefer the live lectures. Um, so I think the flipped format is working pretty well. I think most students prefer it, although some don't, and I, I don't know that I'm ever going to convince those. Um, I think maybe we could do with a little more, a few more online problems and maybe some more written, uh, challenging written problems. So I might you know, work on the problems a little bit. But overall, I think it's, it's working pretty well. And I think one of the students like is, is that there's lots of resources available. It's very flexible. They can watch the lectures whenever they want. One student told me he watched the lectures in bed. I'm like, too much information? I don't need to know that. So uh, you know, they, they can do whatever they want. They like getting the instant feedback, and then they liked having these somewhat harder questions that uh, were written questions that they handed in and then got back the next day. So that's it. Am I in my time? No, great. Okay. Lauren, do you think that the uh, hour and a half recitation is enough? I think so. I mean, sometimes I found that, uh, you know, I would do a little summary of the week, a little sort of highlight of the main points. Um, we would go over the online problems. We would go over the written problems. And I always had a couple of examples I did as well in class. And some weeks we found that we were kind of done five or 10 minutes early. So any recitations do you do any, what I would call, you know, at more active learning, or where you give them something to work on? And I, I didn't do that. But I've, I've wondered if that's something I could do in the future, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Let me. Oops. No, so. Sorry. One, one more question. So, next um, three or four years down the line, if you look way ahead, how would you? <laughs> it's not using, that far. No, 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 no. <laughs> I hope it goes quickly. Uh, with all these tools at, at your command and your thinking, what sort of a destination? Twenty twenty. You know, how would you fundamentally rethink? What, what's your, you know, you, you saw this AI tutor. If you had all this in mind, what's a end state you could imagine? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like we're tweaking this now, and it, I feel like it's getting better and better, and the students like it pretty much. 
I mean, a number of the students have said to me they like having this in one or two classes, but they wouldn't want all their classes this way. So I, you know, I think they, you know, they want to have some live interaction with faculty and lectures. So I can't imagine that we're going to do everything this way, and I can't imagine that all faculty would want to do it this way. Um, but I, I think it's a different option for students, and I think there's a different way they can learn. I mean, one of the other things I've been amazed at is how many different ways the online materials have been used. So, you know, I'm obviously using it here at MIT in class. There's the MITx students are using it. But for instance, my department requires all of our PhD students to take um, a, a, a required core course on mechanical behavior of materials. And we get students with lots of different backgrounds who may not have that much background in that topic. And I found that our graduate students are using it as kind of a refresher to to be able to do the graduate level course. And I've, you know, I work on cellular materials, and a lot of them are biological materials. I've been to conferences on sort of biomechanics and biological materials. And people in those departments don't have a mechanics course often if they're in a biology department. And they say their students and their postdocs have been using this as a way to kind of get geared up to do the, the research that they want to do on biological materials. So there's lots of different ways it's getting used, I think, which is one of the really great things about it. Thank you for your support. <laughs> uh oh, time, time, time. You're going over it. You're going over, not me. It's your fault. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go over because I think, I think the end state I'm asking for is basically what you're saying is a powerful set of tools, and there are a bunch of different new crazy things that have come out of this different end states, and we have to work it out and sort of experiment as we I think as we're going see. along, yeah. It's not like I have a vision of, in 10 years, what this is all going to look like. But I, I think as we go along, we're kind of developing it. So. But do be strict with the others. Well, right, with everybody else.